today's video is actually talking to all the fellows out there, all you husbands who may have some concern about homeschooling. So while I'm mowing, I'll point out five different reasons or I guess more popular concerns that we as fathers have when it comes to transitioning about homeschool. Let's get started. Okay, reason number one. How much does it cost? Costs. Money, money. And that's important. It's very important. Especially when you're working, you know, one job, two jobs, part-time job, whatever your situation is, you know, you're already, you know, uh, contributing to your school's public education system wherever you live, whether that be through your rent or if you're owning your home, you know, through your property taxes. I think that's a very valid concern. So when we look at a lot of homeschoolers, or maybe your wife has shown you a homeschool YouTube channel, you know, there's this there's this idea that you need to have this really big room that's dedicated to just homeschooling. Where was I? We think that we have to have this really large room or dedicated space to homeschooling. And for my family, uh, specifically my wife, she's actually taken it upon herself to simplify and really minimize the amount of real estate that we dedicate to homeschooling. She actually uses two uh, carts to uh, have the kids push their homeschooling material around. So when using these carts, it really simplifies the location of where we need to hold homeschool. And I, I'm, I'm bringing up the topic about location. Because when you, when you think about homeschooling, you might have a sense of obligation that you need to have a, hey, you can do it poster, and really nice chairs, and a really nice table, you know, ergonomics, and all these things. For our family, the truth is, they pull out these carts that's uh, tucked away in their closet. And every day, they roll it right over to the kitchen table, and they sit on the kitchen chairs, and that's when they begin their homeschool. So, when it comes to homeschooling, thinking about, man, how much do I need to spend on furniture? Uh, because we haven't even gotten to the curriculum yet. How much do we need to spend on furniture? You know, how much do we need to spend on things for like PE? I say if you allow yourself to think and over engineer what homeschooling really uh, or what needs to be, then you're going to spend that amount. But for us, you know, we do our homeschool at our kitchen table. Their PE consists of going outside and doing some yard work. Literature, math, uh, Bible study every single day. And it's actually, it's actually really, really cheap. To date, I'd say we've spent about $400. I believe it's around $400 per, uh, per year for homeschooling material. Now, I know you're gonna look out there gonna look on the internet and you're probably going to find some homeschooling material that says hey you gotta have this and you need this and this and this and at the end of it when you check out that price tag is gonna come out to you you know a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars in all honesty some of that price what it's providing is some of the work that you have to do.
rather uh, a homeschool teacher, i.e. You, you or your wife. And if you do take a little bit of accountability and responsibility, you'll find that you don't need that latest and greatest planner. You don't need that activity chart. Just use a regular notebook. Just use a poster board from Walmart for a dollar. You know, like many teachers out there who are very thrifty about, you know, making sure their supplies last, we do too. So it's not, it's definitely not discounting the hard work that goes into homeschooling, um, but you can make it really, really cost efficient. So homeschooling can be as expensive or as cheap as you want it to be. If you want to get your kids the latest and greatest, hey, more power to you. If you just want them to get the material and the principle that you want to instill in them, I'm sure you'll find a way. And for us, that just means a cart and the materials that we find online. The next topic I want to talk about is influence. So, how many times have we had a conversation with our children about what they saw or what they heard from school and how, in a different way, it doesn't align with your family's values and beliefs? And I think it's really important to talk about this topic. When I think through, uh, of how we raised our daughter and son. You know, I think about the many conversations that we've had when they came home from school. Why did this boy get to have this? And why did this girl get to do this on the weekend? Um, I think a common one was, you know, my friend gets to eat candy at this time of the day or after dinner. Well, for us, we had to learn the hard way that you eat at you eat candy after dinner you know if the child falls asleep because of a sugar crash they're most they're more prone to get cavities so we stay away from those things but it's this conversation this reoccurring conversation that we have time and time again and I think that with homeschooling I have a much better control of what exposure and experiences my child will have in their years of growing up you know, from the moment a child is born until they're 18 and they leave your house and say goodbye for the very last time, um, or at least we hope so, uh, you know, I think that it's the parent's duty to ensure that, you know, their child will learn fundamental principles such as work ethic, being kind to others, being understanding, listening more than talking. Know, things of that nature and when you take a when you take the variable of putting your children into public school there's a lot of that goes into that um, a lot of retracting and redacting of what this kid said and what that kid said and how it does again it doesn't align to your family's values so for us homeschooling our children has been an amazing an amazing uh, shift in their mindset, their attitude, and their behavior, just overall. They're nicer, they're kinder, um, they listen, and they listen carefully now. Whereas I think 
in the busyness of the school day, uh, they would just listen just to get out of the room or, you know, get away from the situation and go about their business. So influence, something to think about. Oh, so third topic being stress. How many of you have experienced where you wake up in the morning and you may have slept in a little bit or you let's say you got on you got up on time and you do your absolute best to put out your kids clothes and make them breakfast and everything and your kids just aren't moving fast enough yep happens to all of us they get they're slow to get out of bed they're slow to eat their breakfast. They're slow to get dressed. They're slow to get their backpack. Oh, but wait, they forgot something. So you get in the car then they say, hey, I forgot my project. It's still in the house. So you have to get back in. Hi, Alpha. And, hi. Alpha. And one of those, uh, or I guess the topic about stress is that with homeschool, you're doing it all at home. So all your projects are there. I mean, the kids can show up in pajamas every now and then. You know, we do like to have them get, you know, dressed in the morning because we definitely don't want to make it this habit of, you know, just wearing, I don't know, call it F leisure for kids or laziness of, you know, getting dressed in the morning. But imagine that. And then as we're talking about stress, you don't have to commute. So for those of you, and I say all these things, if both you and your significant other are working, then, you know, maybe homeschool isn't necessarily a feature for you or an option for you. But if you are, if you are and you have the option to do so, think about all the time you'll save from sitting in your car and waiting to drop your drop your children off at school and to pick them up think of all that gas money you'll save think about the stress you'll save you know maybe you've had maybe you have a habit of having to set an alarm uh to pick up your kids maybe when you get there you don't have one of those uh those kids like id tags that you have to have in front of your car and you don't have to run back to the house to get it i'm sure some of you you know or the most of you leave it in your car but what happens when a child gets curious and they take that id card and decide to throw it in the yard and now you're kind of panicking because you've been waiting there's cars behind you can't pick your child up etc cetera, etc cetera. i'll say the stress of getting up in the morning has been significantly less since we've been homeschooling. And, you know, I, there's, there's a saying out there, like the first three minutes of the day is really important to your child. Uh, of course, your spouse as well. Um, but for those of you that are experiencing this cycle, which we have, of waking up and trying to calmly tell your kids to get dressed, calmly tell them to eat their breakfast on time, and calmly get out the door and find that that calm aspiration evolves into this sort of yelling and rushing. Like, yeah, that's something, you know, we haven't experienced in the last two years. And that's kind of part of what's really bringing, you know, our, our family together is that we don't feel that stress in the morning. And also, you know, it's a less stressful on your kids too. Well, I spend a lot of time out here mowing, um, which by the way, if I didn't know that lawn mowing could be a hobby. And quite frankly, like it's actually something I look forward to on the weekend. Granted, it takes about, you know, to anywhere from two to three hours now, uh, now that I've already mowed things over twice. Um, you know, that's 
two to three hours that's taken away from my family. So which kind of brings us to our fourth topic and that's family time. You know, uh, with, with your kids in school, um, spending, I don't know, anywhere from four to six hours at school and then when they get home, they have homework and more than likely they'll need that time to be quiet, uh, time to be quiet so they can concentrate and, you know, get their homework done. You take that, you take all those hours from school and when you combine that with the hours they sleep, uh, you know, oftentimes, I think that's kind of where the expression might come from, or at least part of it is that you blink and your kids are all grown up. And uh, I'll admit that's that's one of my that's one of my biggest fears as as a father is you know feeling like I don't get to spend enough time with my children. Granted, I do work from home, so I'm I'm really fortunate and uh, happy that I ha I have the opportunity to do that. And now, with our kids, if they weren't you know, homeschool, then I would see them after, you know, say two o'clock. And then uh, I would probably work till, you know, five thirty six, and get to have dinner with them and spend a quick hour of family time. And that's if nothing's there or if there's no errands after work. But since we are homeschooling, I actually get to see them the entire day. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll come downstairs and I have the opportunity to uh, see how they're doing in school, drop in, give them some praise or give them some tips and tricks on how to solve, you know, a math problem or figure out uh, like punctuation or, you know, things that we've learned. And the little moments that I get you know, in between work, lunch, and at the end of the day, I'd say it's been such a blessing, you know? Um, now, if you're not working from home, and let's say just only one of you is working from home, I'd say that's more the reason, because your children, you know, they, they, they probably have anywhere from three to six different teachers. Um, depending on the week, depending on your school, and you know that's that's six different faces that they meet, and then when they get home, you know they have to deal with homework and all those things, and you know compound that with like the stresses of like you know the the qualitative things that they have to think about. You know, this happened at school, and I want to talk about it, or maybe I don't want to talk about it, and all those things are really taking away from family time. So to my point, you know, when you homeschool, at least, you know, if one of you are, you know, if one of you has to commute for work, at least one of you will get to spend that time with your children. And I think that's so, so invaluable, you know, and in the short term and in the long term, where they get to reflect on you know, when our kids get to, uh, when our kids grow up, they get to reflect on how much time they got to have, not just with their mother, but seeing each other grow up. And additionally, their baby sister grow up, Zoe. You know, I don't think there's a price on that. I mean, after all, that's, that's what we as, we as fathers want, right? More family time. And the final reason, I think, what gives us fathers some hesitation for for homeschooling our children is social activities, and it's very important. very important to have uh, that social environment for your kids especially when 
you know, in a time of right now, COVID, where, you know, there's some schools that are limiting uh, re-entry back into schools. And even if you get into school, there's this sort of like obstacle, this barrier, you know, both figuratively and literally. Like some kids have, I know some schools have like these like plexiglass masks and things like that. Um, and that's kind of what I want to hit on is that, and again, I think this part here is, is uh, it's going to take a little bit of effort on the parents. You know, there's, you know, sports, sports have made a comeback um, for us. It's taking our kids to church and it's putting ourselves out there with our neighbors and connecting with them and introducing our children to their children. You know, I think we may rely on school a lot for their social development. Um, however, if you homeschool and you take the time to actively seek and while being mindful about the audience or the friends that your kids have, you know, I think in turn that'll give you less stress and it'll reinforce, you know, the type of crowd that you want your kids to be in. If you ever thought like, man, I don't know what's up with my friends uh, or my kids' friends, um, or if you've ever thought like, man, I wonder what their parents are teaching them at home. You know, this is a really great example of how when you homeschool, you can have the active choice, your choice. And I think that's kind of what it all comes down to. It's having choices. If you think back through all of the other points that I've made, you know, choosing to spend more time with your children, choosing to see what they're learning and what their exposure and experiences are choosing uh to have um less stress or i guess more specifically choosing how you want your day to go you know um choosing your curriculum you know and and really having the choice to to spend a lot or spend as little as possible so all in all i think a lot of this is is about choice and when it comes to your you know your child's social interaction uh, you provide that, right? Instead of essentially sort of rolling the die and seeing what kind of kids they hang out with at school. And you might find out, or you might not. It's still a mystery, right? So chances are you're watching this hey. because your wife recommended it to you. Or maybe... You know, you're the one that found this video and just wanted more reasons of why you were in school. And at the end of the day, I think that by exploring homeschool and the great benefits that come with homeschooling is definitely worth looking into. Clearly, my daughter has something really important to say. If you have any other questions or if you'd like to see uh, more homeschool videos, uh, reach out to my wife. Thank you, everyone. Have an awesome day.